Hey, hey, how you doing? We're back with another episode in the awesome adventure of flipped geometry here at Calvary Chapel Christian School. We're going to jump into 8.5, angles and circles. So we have studied a couple of different angles in circles in the last several lessons, and this one takes us outside of the circle, sort of. Um, the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a secant that intersect at the point of tangency is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. So I want you to think about that. Circle, secant, tangent line. They intersect at the point of tangency. Okay, I'll show you a diagram in a minute, but first try to picture that. The measure of the angle is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. So just like the angle, um, an inscribed angle from last lesson, now um, the same math works if if part of that angle is actually a tangent line. So let me show you um, where this fits in the great big scheme of things. We've done intercepted angles, um, I'm sorry, in, uh, inscribed angles and their intercepted arc, okay? So 25 degrees would be the measure of this angle because it's 50 degrees of arc. This would be 40 degrees of, uh, of angle because it's 80 degrees of arc. If you keep widening this, 60 degree angle and 120 degrees of arc, you can see that logically this flows. Here's a secant, here's the point of tangency, but now C is no longer um, in, uh, on the circle, C is now outside of the circle, so BC is a tangent line. And uh, angle ABC now 154 degrees of arc, would be 70, what is that, 77? Um, yes, 77 degrees of angle. So um, you can see the logical progression of this, and this diagram is good at helping you understand. It's the same idea, just as it opens up, this is about as big as it can get, right? A line of tangency there. So um, let's do an example with this. Find the measure of WYX, if x, z is tangent to circle q at y. So circle q, point y is the point of tangency, x, z is the tangent line, and then we have y, w as a secant ray. Okay, so they want to know the angle of w, y, x. What's the angle right there? This they're giving you is 240 degrees of arc. The balance then would be, what's 360 minus 240? 120. So this is 120 degrees of arc, which means that this angle is half of 120, which would be 60 degrees. Okay? Um, let's do another couple of examples. Actually, let's get more theorems before the next example. Um, so the measure of an angle formed by two secants that intersect in the interior of a circle is one half the sum of the measure of the intercepted arcs. It's a lot of words. Look at the picture. The picture is more helpful. Here we have a circle. Here we have two secant lines, okay? And they intersect in the interior of a circle. Now, if you were to grab this, this point, point E, and drag it over to be the center of the circle, we, we know that these angles would be the number of degrees of their arc. And on both sides of that intersection, they have to be the same measure because of what what would be that postulate? I'll give you a second to think about it. Because they're vertical angles, right? So both sides of this intersection have to be the same angle measure, and both sides of this intersection have to be the same angle measure because they're vertical angles. So if we were to grab E and drag this whole thing down to G, we know that both sides of this over here would be the same because they would be intercepting the same arcs, the same measures of arc, so the angles would be the same. And the same thing above and below. These would have to be the same angle measures because they're um, vertical angles, and if we drug this down here, above and below, they would have to be intercepting the same measure of arc. But now, when you allow E to not be the center of the circle, like it's drawn, now, You've, you've skewed it. And so this is not the same uh, angle, sorry, the same measure of arc, and this is not the same measure of arc. But the interior angles are still the same. They're still a vertical angle. We haven't changed that. So these angles have to be congruent to each other, 
even though they intercept different arc uh, angles, different measures of arc. And so uh, how do we make that happen? Well, that just means that the interior measure of those angles, because they're vertical angles and they're congruent to each other, they have to be the average of the intercepted arcs. And that's what this theorem is telling you, that if you have the, the uh, arc measure of one side of the circle, and the arc measure of the other side of the circle. You can average these two arc measures, and that will give you the measure of the um, the angles there that the secants form. Okay, same thing above and below. Um, and so you have two sets of congruent angles that are um, intercepting two different degrees of arc, uh, and so they they are the average of those degrees of arc. All right. Uh, you'll do plenty of those things in class. Let's look at an example here. This time, um, we're saying that this is a 44 degree arc and this is a 50 degree arc. Well, angle one is the same as this one that they're not labeling. These two angles are the same because of vertical angles. So these two angles, one is not 50 and 44, but they are the average of 50 and 44. So 50 plus 44 is 94, half of 94 is 47. Um, and so angle one and its vertical angle pair over here is 47 degrees. You could then easily determine what this angle and this angle are, right? Because this is supplementary. And so 44 and uh, uh, 136, there you go, 136 degrees um, would be what's above and below this intersection. So um, that's just an example of the kind of stuff you're going to be doing. Here's another example of the kind of things you're going to be doing. They have given you here three of the four arc measures, and then they're wanting to know what's the measure of angle one. And then just for fun in the example, they also help you find the measure of this angle. So circle Q has two secants passing through it. One of the arcs is 45, one of the arcs is 85, one of the arcs is 120. What's this other arc? We don't know that. 45 and 85 is 130. 130 plus 120 is 250. There's 360 degrees in a circle, so 360 minus the 250 that I've already accounted for lets me know that this arc is 110 degrees. 110 degrees and 85 degrees, you have to average those two together to get to the measure of angle 1. 85 plus 110 divided by 2 is 97.5 degrees, right? So that's the angle here. And then they're helping you just to see that these two angles, angle one and this one here, are supplementary. So 180 minus the 97.5 gives you 82.5 as the angle measure here. All right, if you have any questions about that, we can go through some more examples in class. All right, now we're going to take the intersection point of these two secants, and instead of having the two secants intersect inside the circle, we're going to have these two secants intersect outside the circle. Um, and so in this situation, the angle measures, we still have two vertical angles that have to be congruent. Um, but now it's kind of weird because the intersection is, is not in the circle. It changes things. So what is, the, um, what is the angle here? Well, the angle here is no longer the average of the two intercepted arcs. Um, the, angle, the angle measure here is now half of the difference of the measures of the intercepted arc. So you're not averaging them together. It's not arc one plus arc two divided by two. Now it's the larger arc, arc one, minus the smaller arc, arc two, divided by two. So you're taking the difference and then dividing that by two. If you get them in the opposite direction, you'll have a negative number and you'll just look at it and go, can't have a negative angle measure. Oh, I just subtract the wrong way. Just change the sign. Make sure it's always positive and you're fine. Um, so here I have the difference between two arc uh, measures divided by two, okay? One more theorem. The measure of an angle formed by a secant and a tangent that intersect in the exterior of a circle is one half the difference of the measure of the intercepted arcs. So when we were taking an, an inscribed angle and making it wider and wider and wider and wider until poof, it became a tangent, it worked the same way whether the intercepted angle was um, sorry, whether the inscribed angle was totally inside the circle or whether one of the, the lines was a tangent. The same thing works here with the last theorem. We had two secants intersecting um, outside of a circle. 
And now if we make one of those secants a tangent line, it still works the same way. It's the same math. So it is one half the difference of the measure of the intercepted arcs. So just like two secants, you take the measure of this arc and the measure of this arc, you subtract them, you divide by two, that's the angle measure right there. Okay, we'll do a couple examples of that. And just like it didn't make any difference if you had two secants or a secant and a tangent, now it doesn't matter if you have two tangents, um, the same math applies, right? So it's still one half of the difference of the two intercepted arcs. So the easy thing to remember about these three theorems is uh, don't get hung up on, was it a secant, is it a tangent? If, if the two lines that touch a circle intersect outside of a circle, then it's one half the difference of the two intercepted arcs, okay? So don't get too hung up on it. Um, you'll, have, you'll, you'll, you'll give yourself a fit trying to keep these three theorems apart, and in truth, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, um, so let's do some examples here. Um, find the measure of angle yxz. Here's yxz. And the measure of arc wy. And the measure of arc wv. If the measure of angle wxz is 40, wx z is 40 degrees. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here. You pause the video. See if we can get the same thing done. Try to work on it on your own. All right, did you do it? Let's see how we did. Let's work on this together. Um, we've been given two arc measures here, 88 and 145. Um, and we've been given this larger angle here as 40. Um, and then what they're wanting us to do is figure out what these arcs are and what this angle is. So first, let's take a whack at that angle. Um, we know that the measure of angle yxz, angle yxz, is going to be one half of the difference of these two intercepted arcs. So 145 minus 88 divided by 2 is 28.5. So this is 28.5. Okay, now we know this is 28.5. We know that this whole thing is 40. We can just do some quick subtraction, right? Um, and show that 40 minus 28.5 is 11.5 degrees. So this little angle is 11.5 degrees. We've answered part of their question. Now we know that this unknown arc minus this unknown arc divided by 2 has to be 11.5, but we've got two variables and only one relationship. We can't solve it yet. We need to think about another way that we can relate those two angle, uh, those two arc measures to each other. And so let's look at the circle as a whole. Um, measure of arc VW, arc VW, plus A, this unknown angle here, or measure of the arc here, plus the 88 and the 145 is gonna make a circle. So I can combine all of my like terms and I can know that measure of arc VW equals 127 minus A. Um, I combined like turns and subtracted. They, they're skipping a bunch of algebra steps here, but I hope you can see what they're doing. So this arc is 127 degrees minus A. I don't know what A is, but I have 127 degrees left here, um, and some of that is A. The rest of this is not. Okay, let's, uh, let's move forward from here. So 127 minus A is that arc. And now I can take the other thing that I know. This angle is 11.5 degrees. This angle is A minus this other unknown thing divided by 2, or 1 half of A minus the unknown thing. Well, the unknown thing, this arc, is 127 minus A. So I'm going to take this statement, and I'm going to plug it in here. So this 11.5 is 1 half of A minus this arc. I'm going to just going to substitute its, its equivalence uh, subtraction statement here. So 1 half of A minus 127 minus A. Now, they skip a whole bunch of algebra. I wish they didn't. Let, what do you do here? Well, 11.5 equals a half of something. So let's multiply by 2 to both sides of the equation. 11.5 times 2 is 23. So this is 23 equals, and now I've gotten rid of the 1 half, A minus 127 minus A. 
I have to combine my like terms. I'm subtracting a, uh, a sum. So I change the sign of both things, right? Minus 127 minus minus becomes plus. So A and A is 2A minus 127. Did you follow all of that algebra? I hope so, because here it is. 23 equals 2A minus 127. OK, um, now I need to solve for A. And to do that, again, they're going to skip a whole bunch of steps. I add 127 to both sides, and then I divide by 2, and I get A equals 75. So A equals 75. All right, now I can plug that back in up here, and I can get the measure of arc uh, VW. 127 minus 75 is going to give me 52 degrees. So now I have 52 degrees, 75 degrees, 11.5 degrees, and I've done everything that they wanted me to do. This was a long example. I hope you followed it, um, and we will do things like that in class. So uh, that's it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments field below, and I'll do my best to answer them in a timely manner, or you can just see me in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.